Truly, I just really want the best for you. Only making sure the stage is set for you. I don't even know why I'm so nervous because it's been a minute. <laughs> but hey, guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sasha. If you are new here, I have another YouTube channel. You might know me from there if you're coming from there. It's Sasha Gay Robinson. That's more of my personal vlog youtube channel if you're interested go ahead and hit that subscribe button there and also hit your subscribe button here on this channel i talk about my journey from one country which is jamaica migrating to canada i'm currently in canada i've been in canada since 2018 but i've been here before if you are new to this channel go ahead and check out other videos that i talk about my entire journey coming here and then come back to this video so if you know me you know that i made my notes because i can't remember every single thing so I listed some stuff that I think is necessary to bring and what not to bring on my phone based on my experience. So for clarification, I say this in all my videos. I am not an immigration officer. I do not work for the government. The information that I'm providing or advice that I'm giving, it's based on my own experience, okay? So let's begin. So the first thing that I have on my note is to bring your immigration documents. These include your passport, your education credentials even if you're not coming here for school and say you're coming as a worker what if you want to study afterwards or what if you just want to learn another skill and you need to prove that you have certain credentials from back home it's necessary to bring it if you are indeed coming for school that's definitely different i want you to bring all the documents that you have uploaded when you were applying for the student permit okay so every single thing that you can think about when you reach the airport just in case they ask you for it, at least you have it, okay? So all the immigration documents and also your medical documents such as your immunization card. The second thing I have on my list is the driver's license, a driver's abstract if possible. So you, if you intend to drive when you're in Canada and you have a driver's license back home, say you're coming from Jamaica or Nigeria, any one of those countries, for example, and you have a driver's license back home, you don't necessarily want to start over here because in Canada, they have three licenses, well, three general licenses. So you have the G1 that you have to do the written tests over the computer. So they ask you questions as it regards um, the, the codes and the signs and, you know, certain stuff that you're supposed to know as it regards learning how to drive. You can't really drive with that license unless you are driving with someone with a G license for five years. So you have the G1, G2, and the G. So the G is the most advanced one. So after you do that exam, then you have to do the G2, which is the road test. Then the G is when you go on the highway. So you have three levels. If you have a driver's license back home, you probably be able to skip it depending on how long you have your license for, etc. So I recommend if you do have your license from back home to bring it. Depending on the country that you're from, we might take a driver's abstract. So if you can get a driver's abstract before you come or if you get it afterwards and you're going to get your license in Canada, well, Ontario, I know about. Let's be very specific. I'm not sure about any other province. But in Ontario, when you get your driver's abstract from another country, then you should be able to use it to advance either getting your straight G or you can get the G2 and you don't have to do driver's training because that can take a a while and it can also take money to do that so i recommend getting or bringing your driver's license if you have one all right we're gonna get into the nitty-gritty right now as it regards you know the clothes that you're supposed to bring first i just wanted to let you know in jamaica for me or if you're from jamaica or any tropical or caribbean country you know that we don't really have seasons we just have basically summer from january to december i mean december is a little bit chilly but it's still not as cold as most of the cold countries are like canada so one thing you should bear in mind <laughs> is that canada weather changes a lot sometimes it's very rainy they have their summers of course summer is from june until i think august or september no june until august and then fall is from september until i think it's either november or october and then you have winter from december to february then you have spring but what i should let you guys know it is completely different when they say they have seasons they do have seasons it's not as if you're in jamaica where you can wear just warm clothes 24 7 365 days you have to dress according to the weather that does not mean you're going to come to canada with a bunch of clothes i promise you you will not need 
a lot of clothes when you're coming here so this leads to my next point please do not I repeat, do not overpack when you're coming here. I understand that you're moving from one country to the other and you're like, okay, I'm going to need this. I'm going to need that type of clothing. I promise you. Within probably like five to six months, if you're coming here as an international student, you're going to buy clothes eventually. So I don't recommend packing too much. I think you can get away with packing like two suitcases full of items. And I recommend packing more warm clothes than summer clothes or spring clothes so like your jeans you can pack socks but those are these are actually cheap in canada so you don't necessarily have to pack them but stuff like jeans if you can get a winter jacket back home go ahead and purchase it and bring it or if you want to wait until you get here depending on when you're coming if you're coming in the winter i would suggest getting it from back home and bringing it if you're coming in the summer at least you have you know you have a little bit you have some months before it's actually winter time and you can purchase a winter jacket in summer in Canada and it will be extremely cheaper than when you're purchasing it in December or in the winter overall. So what I recommend packing, less summer clothes. So limit your summer clothes. If you're, if you're traveling with kids, I suggest do not bring a lot of clothes because kids grow. So bring enough for them to last for like two months or so. But remember that your clothes can always wash. So don't worry about them repeating clothes. You can always wash your clothes. If you're coming and you don't want to spend a lot of money and you're like, okay, my kids have a lot of clothes already. I don't want to purchase any. Of course, bring those clothes, but don't overdo it because they're going to grow out of it unless you're going to donate your clothes. But you're going to lose off in the long run. You're going to probably pay a lot of money when you're at the airport just for the heavy luggage. So I recommend just packing what you need and not what you think you want if you get what i mean so pack some jeans pack your winter jacket some sweaters as i mentioned you can do socks or slippers don't pack too much heels if you're a female heels over here is not that expensive it depends if you want designer that's a different topic but i'm talking about heels overall is not that expensive you can get it here pack comfortable clothes depending on the type of job that you're going to be doing whether you're a student or you're a worker it depends on their job if you're going to going into a job where you have to wear heels then you can buy it over here you don't have to worry about it but most of the times honestly canadians they don't really watch what anybody wear or me personally i'm not a canadian yet but me overall and the persons that i associate myself with they don't really watch what you wear as long as you're comfortable and you just dress clean that's perfectly fine so i suggest don't overpack in like two suitcases is probably good if you're migrating and uh, don't pack too much summer clothes because you can always purchase them over here and you do get like probably two to three months of wearing warm clothes to be honest so most of the time you're wearing either fall clothes where it's a little bit chilly but it's still on the warmer side or you're in winter because even for this, this summer honestly even two weeks ago it was very chilly and no we're in Today is July 1st. I'm making this video on July 1st and it was very chilly in June. So as I said before, just pack. Pack the things that you need and not what you want as it regards clothing, okay? The next one is skin products. This might not be for everybody, but for instance, if you're from Jamaica or Nigeria or any other country that you know you use natural products or natural made soap to um, on your face or on your body, you know, you don't really want to change your hygiene routine just because you're moving to another country. So you can pack those. Pack in um, the amount that you can actually carry on the plane. Do not overpack or bring it on your carry-on and then it will be taken away from you and you're wasting your money. So that's something that you can pack. And also skincare is very important, especially in the winter. And remember, most of the time is basically in the winter when you're in canada so i highly recommend getting or practicing a skincare routine when you do come to canada or if you have one just stick with it it might be different if you're coming from a tropical country like your skin routine might be different because you're in a colder country but still you can bring the stuff from home but as i mentioned just make sure that you don't have it in your carry-on and you have it in the check-on luggage okay all right let's talk about the next one which is medication this is not for everybody and of course you know as humans we're going to need our vitamins and minerals etc you can get your vitamins like vitamin c d d3 iron you know stuff like that here in canada 
it's quite reasonable it is an okay price i mean when you purchase it it lasts for a minute right so i would recommend getting them over here you don't need you don't have to pack them i'm going to tell you that but the things that i think you have to pack would be like the medication that you use currently or if you're on a current medication then i would suggest packing that but if you're not and you're going to you think you're going to need extra medication like over the counter ones that you can get in canada just go ahead and purchase it when you're here don't get into trouble with immigration either by packing stuff that you're not supposed to pack like you know do your research i would recommend do your doing your research first and see what is legal in canada and what is not because what might be legal in your country might not be legal oh my phone is falling might not be legal in canada so do your research as it regards the medications and don't think i'm going to forget about the food the food the food in canada is totally different i'm talking personally the food in canada is totally different than what is in jamaica don't get it twisted canada food is is right to me personally i'm from jamaica where we have a lot of spices a lot of flavors so that's what i grew up on i came here when i was what 23 24 so all my adult life well not adult life but all my life at that time i was basically eating jamaican food so the things you can buy again please do your research go on the website the canada website and the airlines website to see what they allow you to bring if you can bring your spices go ahead and bring your spices of course you can't bring certain stuff like chicken and you know you can get those over here but let me warn you personally as a jamaican it depends on where you're living it can be very hard for you to get certain food items for example like snapper um conk you know the things that we would normally eat a lot in jamaica you have to travel a distance in order to get there if you're living in that area it shouldn't be hard for you to get it but if you're living in the Niagara region, like where I live, it's a case that I have to travel to get those. At the local supermarkets, you might get some of the items that you're used to, like soup, um, sweet potato, okra, chocho. I think they call it coyote or something like that over here. They change the names of certain things, but it's the same thing. We just have a different name in my country. You can get a few items in some stores. I think you should shop like at food basis real canadian superstore would have some stuff but there's other places that you can visit as i mentioned it's just maybe hours away or maybe one hour away drive in essence what i'm saying is if you can bring most of your spices go ahead and do that the good thing is when you bring some of those stuff like pimento and you know your your, your spices that you normally use your jerk seasoning etc that you normally use in jamaica the good thing is that if someone is coming up, they can bring it for you. Or if you're going back down and coming up, you can just bring some. You can bring your banana chips, you know, the Jamaican banana chips that everybody love. Stuff like that. You can bring up to, to make you feel as if you're home, but a home away from home. Seeing that you're going to be living in a country where their food is completely different. At least you can cook. So I recommend, and this is not something that you can pack, but I recommend learning how to cook okay learning how to cook because that's the way you survive over here if you're not careful you'll be buying out every single day and that will cost you a lot and being a new immigrant it's not something that you want to do because you're gonna you would definitely go broke soon if you continue that lifestyle unless you have money that's totally different but for me personally i would recommend coming here hopefully you know how to cook if you don't you learn how to cook and cook your meals for weeks you get me and then afterwards now then you can eat out every now and again but mostly i would recommend cooking because you know what's in your food and you don't want to be gaining weight while you're over here just because you're in a new country you're not you're eating unhealthy because you don't know what they put in their food so pack your seasoning pack your snacks if you're traveling with kids pack their snacks you know stuff like that the last thing i want to mention is to pack your banking information well not pack it really just make sure that you have your apps your banking apps from back home on your phone and also your banking information overall that's if you still want to keep your bank account open over there or if you want to transfer money or you want to set up a new bank over here at least you know you know where you can get money from but it's good to have your banking information close to you and available when you need it you know what i don't think i don't think i left out anything if i did or if you can think of anything that I might leave out, leave it in the comment section. I hope this information helped you guys 
in some way if it has please remember if you're not subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also turn your notification bell on so you'll be notified anytime i post a video and i'll see you in canada if you're watching this video more than likely you're thinking about migrating so <laughs> welcome to canada it's not i'm going to tell you though it's not bed of roses oh yeah i can think of one other thing to mention to you guys bring your hustling spirit it is not you're not going to land in a job unless you're coming on a work permit and a job offer that's different but if you're coming as an international student you have to work part-time for one and then you it take, can take a while for you to get a job or a job off your liking for me it took me like three months for me to even get a job so come with your hustling spirit and come with an open mind knowing that okay there's a possibility that it can take you two to three months before you actually find a job so come with your hustling spirit okay all right well i'm not gonna yap anymore i'm gonna end this video so once again if you're new remember to like share and subscribe turn your notification bell on to be notified anytime i post a video until next time god bless you guys bye